Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Yes, you make me feel like I've been locked out of heaven. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UBNRadio.com. Hey, 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 welcome back to the Larry Yates Show. Happy New Year's, everybody. Happy Happy New Year's, everybody. I hope everybody I hope this finds you in good peace, health, and all of that good all of that good stuff. I miss you guys. Hey, uh you, you we we're doing some new stuff this season. Uh we're back on for every Thursday now. I had taken a little vacation there, a little hiatus there uh and we was doing it uh, once a month. So in February, we're going to go back to doing it every Thursday. And thank goodness we're back into that. But anyway, uh, I hope everybody is, is having a good time. I know we have a lot of weather on the East Coast. And we have a lot of snow and ice. And everybody's getting all covered up and stuff. Plus, I like the ice. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I like the snow. Uh, what was that just popped up there? And anyway, I, my mind is—I'm looking at the the the, uh, the video screen or the the computer screens here. So when I looked away and I saw something cr- that I didn't understand, so you just had to forgive me on that one. But anyway, uh, we have lots to talk about. Uh, you know, we just had—I want to love to go out to the people that are suffering from that suffer from the fires here in in the Los Angeles area because it's been really really crazy out here, man. It's been dry. I know a lot of you guys are wow, man. I wish we had this 78, 80 degrees weather in the winter time, but as a price come with it, a lot of people losing their homes, a lot of people lost their lives and stuff. So the prayers and stuff to go out to those in the fire department and I send a lot of love out to I think we had at least one fireman to lose his life uh in the in, into this thing. So starting the first year, off, we got a fun. I, I decided, and we, we decided to make this a fun beginning this year. We got some some surprises for you. But just before I get into the guests, I think you're gonna love our guests. We got some some exciting stuff to talk about. Um, I can't help but to talk about uh, our, my president. Uh, my button is bigger than your button. I can tell you that stuff. Can you imagine the president of the United States? is sitting there talking about how big his button is, and that's the same thing he did. I think it was Marco Rubio talking about how big his hands was, and you talk about how our leaders, the most powerful man on the planet in politics anyway, uh, have the audacity to tweet about, is this something strange? I, it's almost, I don't even, I, I, it's hard for me to say, tweet about his button. <laughs> I kind of laugh at that myself. But, uh, you know, and we, we're looking at that, and we're kind of looking at the condition of, of, in the state of the condition of the country now and how you see universally or what you want to say globally, we're looking at change. I think there's a conscious change of human beings all over the planet. And I think we, and instead of looking at uh, Donald Trump and a lot of my friends kind of, you know, kind of bite him a little bit, but anytime you look at a situation like this, then there's an opportunity for us to look into ourselves, to re-examine our politics, to re-examine our spiritual belief, to re-examine our belief in God and higher powers, and to re-examine what we can do to make this country better, the world better, our community better, and to make ourselves act a little bit more in line with a higher consciousness. And I think the opportunity here is unbelievable that we have a Donald Trump because for the first time in my adult life, we can't hide some of the stuff that we used to sweep under the carpet. We used to sweep racism under the rug and use dog whistles and stuff from the Reagan era all the way to the Bush era. And so we use all these dog whistles to talk about race, talk about black people, talk about people of color. 
And we had dog whistles to talk about women in general. And so now with Donald Trump that is unfiltered, we now have an opportunity that now that is out on the table to say, no, don't push this back under the table. Don't push this back under the carpet. Let's face this thing. Let's face this racism. Let's face this sexism, this homophobia in this country. Let's face what women have been gone, going through. Now, many of us know what women have gone through. But now with this new opening of seeing women step up to the plate and claim their power, and one of the things that we are seeing now, I, you know, we got to be careful in, in how and how we balance this thing out. But now you see what we can see now what women has been going through in this country. And that's what I mean. All of this came up because of Donald Trump. If we didn't have what we call this, this, this guy uh, named Donald Trump, this wouldn't have been out on the table the way it would have been swept under the carpet like it has always been. Uh, the abuse of women, uh, the the sexism, and the the things that women have had to go through in this country. And you know, guys, every time I, from the first day I started this show, I always end this show the same way that a nation can rise no higher than it elevates this woman. And I stand by that statement. And now we're seeing an opportunity for us men to teach our young boys and how to and to respect women and for us to teach our daughters to respect themselves and to support women and let them tell us how they feel rather than a bunch of men getting a panel and telling women how they should feel. So we have these opportunities right now. And this, I think, is going to tie into my guest here today. So I want you to welcome my guest here today. And, I, and it's going to take me a second to get through this. And this is the Hug Alliance. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with the Hug Alliance. I had never heard of this before, <laughs> but I'm just so excited about the Hug Alliance. We have Stephanie. Yep. Stephanie and then Mark. we have uh, Judy. <laughs> and then we also have a uh, guest, Melina. Uh, from uh, what, Czech what? Republic. Czech Republic. Bohemia. Bohemia. <laughs> and uh, so we, I got this very lovely, I hope I don't lose my job by saying lovely women, but I got these lovely, beautiful, highly intelligent women with great sense of humor in here that's going to help me get through this year and see what can we do moving forward now that we have so much on the table to, to, to deal with and to be for me. So lucky to have women on the show, the first show. I want to thank Carolyn Wilkins for helping me put this together. Thank you, Carolyn. Because mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to start my show, this show, the first show of the year with women on here. And I just think it's an honor to have you guys here. So thank, thank you. you for coming. Thank you, thank you so much. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. So who would like to go? Judy, tell me a little bit about Hug Alliance and how did you come about that? What better way to start the new year with all that's on the table than with hugs? Hugs, the power of hugs, and we formed an alliance of about 16 to 18 like-minded organizations that are all about heart-centered living, collaborative models, and community building. And we have partnered with the founder of National Hugging Day, Kevin Zaborny from Michigan, and we're putting on the very first big LA event where we're going to break a Guinness Book of World Records event for the most nationalities in a group hug. It's at Agape International on the 21st of January at 2.30. We're so thrilled that we have Huggies as our sponsor, our platinum sponsor, and many, many collaborative community partners, including Mattel UCLA Children's Hospital. Really, you know, I, I, I got, to, you know... <sighs> I have to admit this. I'm not a hugger. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, you know, it's it's something is missing in me, and I and I take responsibility. <laughs> it's something missing in me. But I got to be honest with you because of the cause, and and I'm not a hugger. And it's not that I'm afraid to hug because I'm afraid that I might get lose my job or get uh, sued or anything like that or anything salacious. I'm just not a touchy, touchy person. Why should I be different? Well, the good news is, the good news is you're not missing anything and you're exactly who you are. Um, people that aren't interested Wait in... Wait a minute now. Did you, <clears throat> did you hear what she just said? 
She said, I'm, I'm okay being who I am. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so he, here's the thing. Uh, you know, there's lots of research, and we're, we're bringing out a lot of research from the, the um, National Touch Institute in Florida from the University of Miami School of Medicine. National the Touch Institute. Institute. It's, yes. I want you guys to Google this stuff, Touch man. Research <laughs> Institute. It's in the University of Miami School of Medicine. Dr. Tiffany Field is on our Hug Alliance, and it talks about the benefit of hugs and how, and also... If you're not into hugging, there's self-hugs. There's, you know, give yourself a hug. How might you do that? Read a book, go for a walk, call a loved one. So there's not necessarily the need to touch one another if you're not into touching or a huggy-feely kind of person. You can find your own way of hugging. We happen to believe that the power of hugs, if everybody's interested in hugging, is very beneficial to the world. And actually, world peace begins one hug at a time. I, I love that. Mm -hmm. So, Judah, what do you have to say about that? Um, I'm Stephanie, but that's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Continue to this correct me here. No, this is lovely, uh, Judy. Uh, Stephanie. Um, I started the Hug Mob last year on National Hugging Day. So when Judy approached me about the Hug Alliance, I had literally just kind of got the inspiration for the Hug Mob. And I went, that's interesting. And they were both kind of came up simultaneously. So we decided this year to celebrate National Hugging Day's 32nd anniversary. And my first anniversary, really, for the Hug Mob, we came together and this beautiful event came forward. And so essentially, we're breaking the record for the largest group Hug Mob. And you can kind of think of it as a flash mob, right? And people just show up and hug, in this case, at maybe an event. And what we did um, last year was the Women's March. And what was important for me was so many women were so, you know, kind of up in arms, I guess is the best way to say it, or just really, you know, in inspired to go out and be heard, let's call it that. And I, I know, as a metaphysician, I, I work in, in that world, that it's really important to stay heart-centered with whatever our intention is. If we don't have love and, and peace in our heart when we're going out to create change, then it kind of misses the mark. So um, for me, it was just about getting out there and giving people hugs and letting them know they were supported in what they were doing. And you you, you uh, threw something out there, metaphysician. Mm. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Um, well, I... On, on another side of my life, I work as a conscious media advisor through my company, Zenpire. And so what I do is I work with people from an intuitive standpoint and working with them also from what I call the science of spirit. So I kind of ground it into a belief system that really works on the body and works on different levels of energy. And so for me, um, the idea of creating a hug stream, really connecting heart to heart to heart to heart, you're, you're creating this energy current throughout all people that then communicates that love throughout. And that's the importance of hugs, in my opinion, is really the energy behind it. I'm totally into the, the vibration and the energy that we all give off, especially when we, when we uh, think, do, act, in positive ways mm -hmm. and, and meeting other energies uh, alike. And I, I really appreciate that. You know, I'm, I'm actually might even consider rethinking getting a hug. So, <laughs> <laughs> Melina, tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, I'm writer, I'm film director, uh, actress, and my other occupation is healer, psychic, clairvoyant. And all together is about the spirituality and my mission is to spread love and peace. How would that fit into the hug? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Very well. You know, when you want to hug the other person, you need to open your heart. You know, if it's really, really heartful uh, hug. You know, you can hug just very cold and without heart. But this action probably stimulate people Think about it. What is it to be hugged and to hug other people? And what is it love? We, we hear many times about love, you know, but really feel it deeply. And hug really from your bottom of your heart is another action, really from the heart. And the other person feels that. And why I say my mission is love and peace, because I really w feel it. So whatever I do create, I really feel that love when I create or hug. <laughs> with, with your accent, where are you? Where are you? Uh, Czech Republic, near Germany. Yeah. Prague. <laughs> I've been in Germany quite a few times. Yeah, in I fact, live in Germany 15 I was just years. in, I think it was last year, I was in you know, Frankfurt, and then I was in Austria. 
uh, so it's time between. Day. Yeah, it's I'm very familiar Czech with Czech Republic, that. Czechoslovakia. Yeah, the former Czechoslovakia is between uh, Germany and Austria. So it's a peaceful country. We have never had really big war. So here, you, here I am. I, I <laughs> I'm born in the country where is peace. How, how long have you been in the United States now? Seven years. Seven years. Mm -hmm. You go back and forward, kind of thing. Yeah. Because I still have work in in Europe, and I love travel, traveling. I travel around the world, and I spread through my work, love, and peace. And like last time, I was in Egypt, and I did a movie, yeah. Love from Egypt. I, I really want to hear more about that. So, <laughs> Judy, t with with when we have someone like uh, this young lady from another country, um, and, and you now you you're you're skilled at what is you're skilled at? I'm skilled at uh, writing. I wrote like five books, mm. and I I'm skilled spiritually. Spiritually, that's the yeah. part we're talking about. Uh, so now, how how does this? How do we get this around the world? Well. There's a number of ways that one might begin to explore how to get this kind of concept, this kind of feeling around the world. One can be by amassing a large group of international participants to a hug mob, which is what we're planning to do. So we now have close to 40 different countries represented. Wow. We'll be coming together in a group hug, a hug mob, on that Sunday, January 21st. And... We have um, sashes for them, just like they have in the in the, <laughs> the national contest. You know, the, the international sashes, like the Olympics. And um, I another way to do it, to spread it around the world, is to first begin with yourself. So when you talk about spiritual um, advancement and growth, to look within oneself, to mm. go within and reflect, and that to me is the best way to spread um, any kind of. Um, energetic of, of love and compassion the best way because when you go down to that source that inner source and spread from there it doesn't matter if you're in one country or another it's felt everywhere it's it's felt in the in the gap in the unknown so to me that's the best way to spread it around the world is to go within and feel it within yourself Stephanie how how do you get people from different religions religious backgrounds in, in, in this? Do, do you approach it mm. from that perspective or? You know, I, I kind of look at what's the universal belief and the universal belief is we all want to be loved and we all want to love as much as we can freely and openly and have freedom to do so. And I think fundamentally, regardless of religion, the common denominator is love. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I always say love is my religion. If I had one, you know, I actually am nom non-denominational by trade because I really want to be universally open to whatever belief system I'm coming in contact with within my clientele. However, for me, what I find is also when we bring it to the science of hugs, which I find interesting. And I know um, there's members on our alliance who really touch into this, like Dr. Tiffany Field and Dr. Stone and others. Um, I think Dr. Stone, it's great. He calls himself the hug doctor, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, we're, and we're learning about the 21-second hug. The 21-second hug. hug. And so if we hold a hug for 21 seconds, what's happening, and again, this is my belief, is that our heart is one of the largest electromagnetic generators, right? And mm. so we put out a field of energy around us, and they're learning um, a lot more about it through the HeartMath Institute and others, that they're discovering what we can do as, as beautiful biocomputers almost, these intelligent mm. systems. And when we learn more and more about the science of it, the belief can then kind of parallel that. And I think that's where it becomes more universally accepted um, across, you know, going back to your first question about religion, I think mostly it's just about what can we find as commonalities versus things that separate us. And I find that hugs and, and being peaceful in the heart and all of these just understandings can really come into play no matter what your belief system is. Well, Lynn, do you find this, um, the human touch, a part of your human spirit, your spiritual a guidance when you're working with um, the healing process of yeah of the energy is so important and uh, the more consciousness you have that you really are in the space of love but really honest it's a way to be in that honest space it's not really word it's a uh, for me it was a, also journey mm -hmm. and though I travel through the different countries I learned different 
kind of love expressions. You know, I, I lived in Egypt eight, year, eight months, I'm sorry, and I learned how e Egyptian Arab people express love. You know, they cannot touch. You cannot touch a man on the street. It was for me as a Western person a shock. I, I cannot touch if I, oh yeah, and you touch mm -hmm. person. And I must, exp I must accept it. But then I learned that uh, the energy of love, if you really love the person, goes from the soul. And you feel the energy as another hugging, you know. It's another form of hugging. It's yeah. another form that you feel the energy, how the other person says, I love you. And it can, it, it's either, either way, man or woman. You know, you cannot really hug person so so that that kind of that actually kind of goes to what I was one of the religious questions I was asking mm -hmm. because what I'm and I'm so glad I, that the question came up because now I'm getting a, a sense now that it, going a little bit back to what you were saying being who I am and that is okay because the hug is bigger than just the physical mm -hmm. although the physical has almost a magnetic field around the two human beings that is coming together mm -hmm. to create this energy of so uh, source if you will that brings people together on a higher consciousness mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. and and so but you know the thing about i, I remember uh years ago they did a touch studies on therapists and psychiatrists did touches on um, babies that what was not touched and baby that was touched does this kind of fall into that category i know it may not be as drastic for human beings but do you find that people go through kind of a starving situation when they are not touched Absolutely. A spiritual starving situation, hunger, whatever. And, and this could, and Judy can speak to this, but I'll just key it off, uh, tee it off, is um, the power of hugs is really what that's about, you know, and that's why Huggies is very, very much promoting that because babies really need the, that power of touch, that hug when they're little. And I know you can speak probably a little bit to it as well, right? And your sure, work. Sure, yeah. Um, and you're right. There, there was, and there st continues to be um, research on the power of hugs and touch with young babies and mm. newborns. And um, there's, there's actually a uh, physiological, um, neurological change that happens in the body, um, especially when touch is accompanied by warmth, caring, and compassionate emotion. Mm. I've actually heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, wow, this is taking me back a few years ago when I was looking into studies on that, the little bit that I've done, and that they found that uh, babies that was hugged and touched out of warmth and love, that their immune system was stronger than babies that did not get as much touch and love and... and, and, and uh, so this is a very powerful thing that we put more yeah. put more knowledge of understanding what's going on. Yeah. It's not just super important. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And but you know, but here again, I, I you know I know there's I know some of my listeners out there are saying, okay, Larry, you got to you got to ask the ladies, <laughs> the women now, in American culture, men generally and generally speaking, are not taught to be as affectionate as we may want young men to be. Uh, generally speaking, uh, men are not big huggers, generally speaking. We pat each other on the butt in a football game, a basketball game, bump the shoulders and the whole bit. And, but how, now that men may want to get into this and cross into this territory a little bit, isn't it a little bit kind of dangerous for me as a man right now to want to hug women? Um, danger is a very interesting word. I would say that um, because men are now coming out more and showing their emotions and their feelings, that can lead to wanting to connect with people via touch. I think that there's um, a very easy way for people to enter into that realm, and that's to simply ask someone, is it okay if I hug you? Well, wait, that's what I mean. Uh, now, when I say danger, I, 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 I'm so glad you um, you caught me on that because I, I don't necessarily mean danger, but right now in the climate where right. we men that may want to reach out and hug, we're terrified because of the, of the things that's happening in the media where sexual harassment is on the table, as it should be. Um, the overall abuse of this as it should be, mis mix missed. I'm from Mississippi, I can blow these words. Uh, missed signals and hold it out. So how do I as a man uh, start to bridge that gap 
Um, I can speak for myself because I've, you know, I've kind of dealt with this quite a bit in the workplace and different things, working in uh, sports industries and entertainment industries and coming across this quite a bit. And I can say that there's so much more damage done with verbal that, that, than even the physical. You know, a lot of times things are just said verbally and now everything's kind of what I call up, up and inflamed, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very inflamed in the psyche of, of where we're at. But it's up to be revealed in order to be healed, right? We have to see it, like you said earlier in the show, and that's what our president's really bringing up to light is all these areas that we've been stuffing away and not dealing with. And so when it's come, coming into this revelation, right, I, I kind of say it's kind of funny how the, the Bible talks about revelations, but this is different, but it's really not because it's bringing up this time where we get to look at everything and go, okay, is this acceptable or not acceptable? And really what it comes down to is is our own um, dishonoring of the feminine within ourselves, the men not knowing that they have an energy that is feminine and loving and emotional that they are allowed to bring forth now. And it's actually very much invited to bring that forth to heal because that's what really comes mm -hmm. from the healing is the heart. So if we're stuffing that away and holding it back, that's not the answer. In my opinion, it's more like what Judy was saying. Just get clear communication going. Just start talking. If a woman comes at you and wants to hug you, don't get fearful about it. You know, it's okay if she's initiating it for sure, then it's okay because she's comfortable in her masculinity and power to know that she's not going to get hurt or damaged, mm -hmm. right? There's also the signals that you can kind of read a little bit. But communication's key. And I do think that it's about honoring people honoring them where they're at and knowing that we're all good, you know, no matter what. I love that. Would you like to speak on that as well? Well, you know, it's, it's really one of my, my favorite subjects and that's the authentic nature that Stephanie's talking about. When, when you, when you enter into a communion with someone in, uh, in the public and social, um, there's a, there's a, a feeling that one gets before there is any even exchange of words. Mm. And it's that unspoken aspect that is really so much more powerful than the physical aspect. And then you go to the, the verbal aspect. So if we choose our thoughts mm -hmm. and our words and our actions all from that same space of mutual respect, understanding, and love, that's what really comes across. And far more than what whatever's going on in the world whatever's going on in the realm of the of the male female sexes um i think it can be uh easily comforted and and um found to be something that can be healing on both sides if there, there if there's an openness and if there's a willingness to to reveal one's mm. inner feelings. This is why I'm so glad that we're doing the show today uh, for Larry X show, bringing in the new year, because in the workplace, I, right now, job is the engineer is a male, and I am the host uh, is a male. And, and more and more of us are becoming conscious, as we should, mm -hmm. as we should, uh, but not... And I say to my male counterparts or... Um, the male species out there don't don't fall into a, a pit of fear. Uh, just communicating, women do what I'm, I'm. I hope I'm I'm listening and learning what we as men can do in the workplace, uh, in in our in this environment. So I I love the way we are, you're approaching this because what you're doing is you're helping the men that is watching this show and myself perhaps learn how to how to act in the workplace and not be terrified but yet be respectful yeah and understand were you did you want to say something on that as well i absolutely agree with the ladies and i think the man is should be now more connected with the heart no more uh, like physical uh, desires but really soul connections and see us as a one you know, uh, women, we have a part of man, part of woman. Mm -hmm. And till 20th century was a man very dominant because uh, the society said also women, if you don't fight, you will be submissive or you will be not appreciated. So the women were more men than women. And man was really man. And he forgot his tenderness, his hugging and loving and peaceful side 
also outside, not only at home. Even at home was uh, cruelty and, you know, and... Yeah, and because, you know, one of the problems, I can speak for the American culture, is that uh, I grew up where, you know, it started with the, the little boy scraping his knee, uh, a metaphor or a cliche, uh, you know, get up and pull yourself up strong, by your boots, don't, cry, don't be that. strong, yeah. don't cry, and, yeah. and shut up, and if you cry, you're okay. a sissy. Right. You know, this is no, this is not me picking at the gay community. You know exactly what I'm talking about, so don't send me no mail out here. But anyway, uh, but we will call sissies, mm -hmm. you know, if you cried and from scraping the knees or you suck it up, and then you get to be a teenager and you have problems at school. There was nowhere for a young man to go and break down because if he broke down, then he was seen as weak. And then the bullies come in on him. Mm. A lot of young men, we forget this now, a lot of young men was bullied because they showed that feminine side or that passionate side or that sensitive side. And so we have to be careful in how we manage the young men growing up and saying to them to be passionate, to be sensitive, uh, but at the same time, we have to protect them from the bullies because that is seen as a weakness. You, 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 you follow me on that? Absolutely. But they will learn too. They yeah. will learn that too. It's a, in universal law. Once we start, it goes further and further also to, to the policemen. But I think <laughs> the good news about this, really, it, when you look at it, it, it goes to bully. Uh, and let's just take the young boys, that we want them to be more of, compassionate, more open to emotions and stuff. But we do open them up for bullying. And then we look at the bullying in the workplace for the women and, and the whole bit. So I could be wrong. I'm just, just a thought just coming to me. But each time you, you approach this sensitive subject, bullying seems to come up that you have to be aware of that too and approach that solving the bullying problem. It's really great to think about bullying, and I, I like to think of it. Um, we also publish a magazine called Inspired Parenting, and we have some articles that really state parenting begins before conception. The science of epigenetics now shows that the thoughts and the behaviors and the consciousness of the parents affect the baby in the womb. And if there's bullying uh, nature in the household, how they speak to one another, if there's bullying on our news and in our media, mm. that all affects the children. So if we can start from very, very young to nurture and love and show our emotions and embrace the authentic nature of who we are, however we are, mm. that's going to slowly have an impact and perhaps even exponential impact on the eradication of bullying because we will realize that we are enough. We, we, bullying often comes from a, a lack of a sense of self. And mm -hmm. if we can nurture that sense of self from the very beginnings of life, then I think we will do very well on the road to eradicating bullying. I, I totally believe that. because I, I, and, and, and adding to that, which may be considered some as metaphysics, and then could be some may consider it as cellular memory. But, you know, you, you go back, a thousand years, your great great grandparents. A thousand years, you got a little Uncle Willie and Uncle John and Uncle Bob mm -hmm. craziness in us, going back a thousand years, and then woo, here we go. My mom, crazy folks on her family side of the family, and on my daddy's side of the family, those two get together, boom, and here come old crazy Larry. So we are packed with this pack of mm -hmm. genetic and somewhat metaphysic um, uh, energy that we pass on to the children. So I, I also think that being aware of the child being in the wound and how we treat the mother and the mother treat her uh, herself and how the, the house come together in some form of, of peace also but as as much as that we also before we come before we we become parents we need to start aligning ourselves up with a higher level of consciousness mm -hmm. yeah Consciousness Absolutely. is key, and awareness is rising on this planet daily. There's more and more people becoming more conscious, and this is why the opposing of that, you know, the opposition <laughs> of that is also rising. So I would just say, you know, be, look at what the programming is. You know, what are you watching on television and putting into your subconscious mm -hmm. belief systems by what, I mean, look at the Hunger Games or all these films that have children fighting each other. Or, you know, if you're taking your children to see those kind of films, right, 
what do you think that's going to put into their yes. sub? You know, it's it's a it's an accountability and a responsibility to, that I think we have to start having that we're creating our own issues to some degree too by what we're empowering as our thoughts, and that's really key. And in a lot of ways, is our thoughts creating our realities. And so once we start getting accountable, like wait a minute, if I stop watching the news twenty four seven and just get the snippets and just you know, kind of get my info and get out, you know, not just feed that energy constantly, mm -hmm. then you're going to feel different. You know, you're going to start to uh, elevate how you feel overall. And that's what she's speaking to as well, as far as staying more heart centered and the importance of that. This becomes dangerous if you're constantly feeding it with stuff that feels fearful. So you got to also look at what are you feeding it? I kind of see it as like vitamin L, vitamin love, you know, vitamin love. And, <laughs> and what is your vitamin love today? What's your daily dose of vitamin love? You know, and that's that's an important thing to think about, too, I think. Would you like to add to that? Yeah, I feel like in uh, 21st century is really big opening of mm -hmm. the universe for people. They can change. All the chains of the centuries, you know, the negativity where you say, you know, my uncle, uncle, uncle. And once you can say, okay, I forgive the past. I forgive all my ancestors. Now I start a better life. Yeah. And your, it might be in your mission. You know, mm -hmm. you never know because some, your soul will say, yes, do it. And maybe your ego, oh, are you crazy? You want to break the rules or the generation? And with your soul, if you are strong enough and you listen to your soul, which want to change the whole planet for the good, for love and peace. Because the more we are, the better we will be here and all together. Because you see how strong are still the negative powers. And we must really spread a lot of light and a lot of love and hugs mm -hmm. you know to be strong because it's so big wave it's this negativity this war thoughts and uh, people want to fight because they didn't know anything else than just to fight and just please start now with love just hug the and first person now you listen <laughs> yeah you know more to, a very bit more to what you were saying and w when we look at we we look at the so-called common person is at war mm. the powers that be know the stuff that you and i are talking and this is why they don't want us to be centered in who we are and they have programs to that is set in place to keep us from being centered in who we are and there some of the programs are so simple that is is, is, is almost mind-boggling and we don't realize the program the minute matter of fact you get up in the morning you're looking at a nine to five job that's a mathematical number they know exactly how much sleep you're going to get. That's a mathematical number. That's a controlled number. They have you worrying about seven days or six days a week and how much you're going to get paid at the end of the week. That's a mathematical formula that, that has been put together. And then they have you and I focusing on 30 days when our bills come in. Yet, they're focusing on the next 500 or 1,000 years. Mm -hmm. So the program that we have been on, the, the minute we come out of the, our mother's and father's, um, come, out, come out of our mother's womb, we're told right and wrong by, by people that was already programmed before we even got here. So we, how much of who we are, how much of a, this, this, the decisions that I make is really my decision, mm. you know? And, and, and I think finding who we are as individuals will help us come into alignment with that, that we will understand the power of hugs, mm. uh, whether it's the physical hug or whether it's the, the magnetic energy field where we look at each other and can hug each other from a distance. Does that make any sense? Absolutely. Yeah. And beautifully said, too. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're really moving into a new era. Yeah. And this era um, has people waking up. And I think it comes to a point where it's the tipping point. I think we've reached that point. It's the hundredth monkey. Mm -hmm. And that we're now, it's easier to speak of what we want to speak about openly. And the power of hugs, the power of love, that really is a wave that can act as a tsunami to yeah. the, the the negative energies because you simply cannot have darkness when you have a candle and a, one yeah. candle. You know, it, it's amazing because it is it really does boil down a lot into how you are looking at life. And you talked talk about wave. I've talked about a little bit on this show here. You know, uh, you can stand out here on the beach in the stormy weather and and you see the um, 
around Malibu and the whole area, the, the, uh, Santa Monica, and the, the city bring these bulldozers and put these big sand dunes up to mm -hmm. keep the waves from crashing in. They put these signs warning you, don't go into the water, rip tides. You got all these big waves and and all of us sitting on the banks and watching the river, watching the ocean, the big wave coming in, and we're going, oh my God, that is so dangerous. Then you look down the street, here's some blonde haired blue eyed kids with surfboards running towards the very wave that we're terrified of. It's because how they see the wave. Right, beautiful. And that's a lot of how we see it. And real quick, um, when you were talking about Egypt, I happened to study a lot of ancient religions and stuff, and. One of the, 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 the real quick people, I'm not going to bore you to death because I want these <laughs> beautiful minds to get involved here. When we look at Isis, Osiris, and uh, um, Hasset, that is a lot of people who say, well, they, they were worshiping these false gods. They weren't worshiping false gods. That's not true. Because what that, what that means is, is that when um, Osiris was killed by his brother Seth, and he was chopped up and thrown into pieces. This is a metaphor. So I know a lot of you have never heard this before, so Yeh's gonna break that down to you. So when, um, when Seth killed his brother, Osiris, you get the same thing in the, in the book of Genesis with uh, Ab 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 Abel and Cain. So it's kind of, it's kind of familiar there. But anyway, so when um, uh, Seth killed Osiris, and sprinkled him, and then Isis had to go gather him, put him together. And when she put him together and laid him on the table, she stood at his head. What that is telling us in that story is that we all have a Seth inside of us that is always this the flesh need, it's the body need, it's the desires to do and eat and drink and smoke and buy that car on heels. Nothing wrong with all of it, but it's just talking about the flesh side of you that is taking over the higher consciousness spirit, Osiris. And so when that battle comes together and Osiris in you, the higher consciousness in you, start to lose and scatter, the beautiful woman spirit, Isis, gather the pieces together and say, calm down, Larry. <laughs> become one with yourself and that's what that story is about and we all right now are at, at, at a point in time that we can you wanted to say something there no no continue. no go ahead I, no I, go right ahead i want to say something about the eg what um exactly what you say because um when i was standing in front of the pyramids you know I was really crying. I, I was so fortunate. I was there almost alone in front of the big three pyramids. Mm. And I was feeling how the Egyptians, the old Egyptians, really, really were conscious about connecting with the universe. Mm -hmm. Honored themselves as a human, but honor also the universe. And if you go down in the pyramid. I've been there, yes, beautiful. You feel that they try to understand this big unknown. They didn't forget it. And what I see, we, we forgot almost. We forgot where we are. We forgot to honor the universe, to trust the universe. And that's why I did that movie, uh, that, that you can honor the, that universal power in, in through the pyramids. This, this time is going by so fast. Let me tell you a little bit about the pyramids, folks. Yeah. Real, the pyramid, there's three pyramids, three yeah. pyramids of Giza. And what that represent, uh, pi in, in, in ancient, before it was turned into the Greek language, that meant fire. And the mid represent the center of who you are. That's that fire that's burning inside you. And the three pyramid, the three level conscious of the mind, just what we was talking about. It's to, to help us to get in contact with the fire, the spirit that's burning within us. And the three represent the cardinal mind, the physical mind, and the spiritual mind. That's what the three pyramids are about. And once you find a balance between the three, then you can reach out and start hugging each other. <laughs> <laughs> and the I love that the segue. The biggest uh, hug. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but go ahead, I'm sorry. I, I was just saying, and that's, that's really the ultimate hug, isn't it? It is. I am so glad. I, I, Jarvis, how much time do we have here? 
We got five minutes. I, I wanted to just do a real quick shout out to our Hug Alliance founder, Rick please. Carson, and his daughter, Shauna, who couldn't be here today, but we were coming in to represent him. And thank you, Rick. And uh, yeah, and they wrote a beautiful st uh, book called The Hug Store. And it's all about being out of hugs and you got to go find your hugs in the stores, you know, and it's kind of this idea of this, her story, Shauna's personal story. So it's a really great book. And well, hello, Rick. Uh, well, you got to come on and promote that book on the show, you know? <laughs> it's a wonderful book. And he's also developed a curriculum um, that's been. Been, um, approved by Montessori schools, and he's got um, a hugging game. So it's all about uh, at a young age to learn about um, connecting with one another and finding that the real hug store is not outside, it's within. Mm -hmm. Exactly what we've been yeah. talking about here, exactly. you know. And I, I just really and truly, I, I, I can't put a measurement on how much this has been for me, what this has meant for me. Mm -hmm. Because we, we we touched upon something is, that is very important for me as a as a male, and as I learn more and more about how I need to be and re respect and honor women, I, although I think I do a pretty good job, uh, but the, the thing about it is, I tell everybody when they ask me how am I doing, I say I'm great, but I get better. But that just means that I am I I'm, I'm doing the best that I can, but there's room for me to grow. And I want to grow, and I want the show to grow, and I want the men and women. Uh, and maybe you've helped some women to talk to men in the workplace about the importance of respect, but also the importance of touch in the right, proper Correct. time, place, and perspective, it's, and energy. And it's like, important not to make women the enemy now. Yeah. You know, because that's what happens sometimes. It's like, oh, this is happening. So, you know, and then there's a fear, like you talked about. And, and that's the thing we want to, it's not no longer the battle of the sexes. You know, it's it's coming into community. I, I like that. And remember this, she, what she said was very powerful. This is not a battle of the sexes. Mm -hmm. You know, it is uh, women are fighting for their right to be individuals. They're fighting for their right for equal pay for equality. equal equality and it's which blows my mind that you got to fight for equal pay for equal work i nothing in my mind can can even rationalize how is it that you don't get paid for the same amount of time work as someone else because you're a woman that anyway i don't want to get off on the it's shifting it's shifting it yeah, yeah but but, but speaking out about it and as long as we step up to the plate and speak out about it and see the donald trump helped me get to this conversation here today so there's a good in <laughs> having having Master them there catalyst. we are at <laughs> bite at the end as jobs uh so what i like to do is go around the table and ask everybody just give a few words of wisdom as we close and let's start from melina, melina. give us a, a few words of wisdom to close on mm. Learn how to really open your heart and go into your heart. Forgive your ancestors, forgive your past. Whatever you have done, it's okay. But now you can change your life for the better. And it's towards the love and, of course, peace. We want to have peace and be light. It means really try to shine every day. We all have struggles. But we don't call it struggles. It's a divine way and journey. Well, thank you so much for that. <laughs> and if I can say, find my film on YouTube, Love from Egypt, because it's worth to discover Egypt. Okay. <laughs> say that one more time. Find uh, you. What's the name of the film? Love from Egypt, from Egypt Milena Oda, Alaska. On YouTube. Thank you for <laughs> thank that. Thank you. Uh, I'll just throw in The Hug Mob is on Facebook and thehugmob.com to sign up for National Hugging Day if you're in the L.A. area or not. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff live stream. I personally, my, my, my message is just whatever you look at, whether it be a person, a place, a thing, just think that you're gazing upon it with the idea of may all that I gaze upon be blessed. And in that moment, you're just honoring whatever that is that's coming forth. Wow, very powerful. Yeah. There you go. And on that note, I say the power of hugs, the power of love, and the power of international community is one that we're really bringing together on January 21st, National Hugging Day. And I thank the Hug Alliance founder, Rick Morrison, author of the Hug Store book, for having us here today. Yeah. You make sure you get Rick on this show. I, I want to talk to him. Well, as I close, I, I just I can't 
I can't thank you guys enough for this. Thank you. But let me just go back as I close with the with the pyramid thing. Within us, and some religions call it the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, and and these three are one. And our how our bodies are broken down into three parts: and arm, legs, body. But when you look inside your consciousness, you know that the pyramid represents a burning flame of desire in you to do good to honor each other, to honor the spirit of the consciousness of the yeah. universe. Right. And as long as you seek that balance from your physical mind, your cardinal belief, and to your spiritual mind, the three will come together in a balance that we can love and respect each other. Yeah. And then go out and give each other a hug. Yeah. <laughs> as I always say on this show, remember, a nation can rise no higher than it elevates the woman. Peace. See you next week.